or let's dive straight into today's video which is all about the ultimate guide to virtual desktop for the Pico 4. This includes setup and tips and tricks as we're going to be doing a lot of experimentation with the bitrate, the graphic settings in trying to push the envelope and get the best possible setup as possible. Now I am using the RTX 2070 but if you are using an RTX 3000 or 4000 series then undoubtedly you will have a better performance as well as if you are using a Wi-Fi 6 you will also have a better performance than me as I'm using Wi-Fi 5 router which is set up by the way 1.5 meters away from me so I did make sure that it wasn't in another room with a wall and the door in between as it does cause some latency there. I'd like to welcome you back to VR Essentials where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality and everything about the metaverse of course. Now for you hardcore fans will also be able now from tonight onwards to participate in our membership service to help the channel so I can purchase and upgrade the gear. For example, it'd be great to be able to get a RTX 3000 or 4000 series graphics card as well as a brand new, if possible, router Wi-Fi 6 as well. So you'll be able to, in exchange for the membership service, get some unique emoticon badges, exclusive videos, and also be able to play together and get support directly from me if you need any specific assistance for your Pico 4, your HP Reverb G2, or other purposes within virtual reality. You'll be able to send me some questions and I'll reply to you via video as well as be able to meet up via Skype or Zoom and have direct assistance there. So plenty of goodies when you join the members service of your essentials. Now virtual desktop enables you to be able to stream directly to your PC and control your PC within virtual reality. This means that you can play any PC VR pancake games, which means non VR games, as well as Xbox and PS5 games as well. That's right. So there's a whole heap of different things that you can do as well as of course, watch your favorite movies inside of virtual environments, which are provided. And I will show you how to do the actual setups and give you a little tour of all the various different virtual environments that are available within virtual desktop at the end of this video. But as always, you can skip to the part that you wish to see the most that is most important to you by going to the description below and skipping to the various different timestamps there. All right, without further ado, let's start playing with virtual desktop in the Pico 4. All right, so now we're inside of After the Fall. Now I can see that I'm a little bit high, so what I'm going to do is just press on my left or right joystick. There we go. And we just go to settings very quickly. And let's just go to general and then bring the high offset down because I'm really, really too high to be honest with you. So there we go. This is much, much better. Let's go to the actual video settings as well and see whether we can push things. So the anti-aliasing is at 8 plus. Let's see if we can put it to... Well, let's just leave it at eight otherwise, because that's the maximum. Um, and then for the render scale, we'll put it a little bit higher to 1.10. It seems that it seems to be doing okay. Texture quality, full res, zombie ragdoll high, shadows on, soft shadows on. However, the shadow resolution I put to 1024, as we don't really need them to be that much higher. And you will save a lot of RAM space as well. So there we go. That's for that. Let's walk inside now. Now, absolutely everything is really, really amazing. I think I just need to bring maybe the resolution scale down a little bit to back to one maybe, but it seems to be performing pretty well, to be honest with you. All the textures on the floor are immaculate. You can see that there's a lot of different avatars over there, a lot of different people, absolutely amazing, and it's handling it like a boss. I can also tell that there's a bloom around. The depth of field is absolutely amazing. When I do turn, there's a little bit of glitchiness here and there. Now and then, not all the time. Then that's probably due to the render scale being at 1.1 and not 1.0, to be honest with you. So now what we're going to do is I'm just going to go and grab this gun here. And then we're just going to start. So let's go to Harvest Run. And then let's go to the first the skid row and let's confirm and then let's go there and then start now absolutely and see how things work over there. All right, so we're inside of the room now. Everything looks really, really awesome. There aren't that many jagged edges whatsoever. And I really love the fact that I can see the nice light of the bloom. I mean, this really feels like PCVR guys hooked up with a tethered experience to be very honest with you. 
it's going to be very hard to tell the differences and do hit the notification bell after you subscribe and smash the likes because I will bring you those videos where I will do side by side comparison using VD and also the tethered experience to the actual computer as well as using the wireless streaming assistant. So we'll do all those various different videos. Now in terms of latency, I can tell a little bit that my, it feels like my arms and things are floating around. They're not moving as fast. So what I can do is just bring up my settings once more and then the render scale, just bring it down to maybe one. There we go. And then now, now it feels much more responsive. It doesn't feel as much that it, they're, you know, just floating around. Although I have to admit that when I bring it back to 1.1 and then I bring it back, it's still very responsive. Don't get me wrong. It just feels like there's a tiny, teeny, little amount of latency which is why i'll bring it down to 1.0 as now it is absolutely fine as you can tell on the video down up down up down up down and then uh, away together away together away together as you can tell we are doing okay there's a slight amount of latency i would say zero point maybe something you know uh zero something maybe uh in terms of latency 0.2 maybe or something like that but it feels very very minimal definitely will be absolutely fine as we play so let's just go and try it out there we go the door is opening up guys this is very very exciting indeed all right and then we can run of course so there we go up 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 take these there we go let's go up absolutely amazing the graphics absolutely amazing the graphics reattach the arcade okay so that's what we need to do and then we can start shooting to the zombies there we go bam 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 Reloading. absolutely amazing and the graphics are just absolutely sublime really feels like a pc vr experience to be honest with you no latency no compression no artifacting of any kind everything is working the way that it is supposed to which is freaking amazing guys it's absolutely amazing you look at this just look at this this is just crazy the quality is just amazing now the router as i mentioned before is only about 1.5 mm away from each other not mm meters not 1.5 millimeters <laughs> Because if it was 1.5 millimeters, it would literally be quite head, I guess. Um, but yeah, no, this is really, really freaking amazing. I'm not having any issues whatsoever. Uh, I'm feeling extremely comfortable inside of the headset, to be very honest with you. The fact that everything is working sublimely is just really, really, really crazy. And I have two guns. I forgot that I have two guns. There we go, come on, no, don't come and kill me just yet, don't want to die. But you can see the extra specularity on the characters as well. Um, you know, how they're moist and there's kind of blood on their bodies and stuff. I mean, it is just absolutely amazing uh, how the game is performing right now. And I can see the bloom, I can see the snow, I can see the wind. Um, there's no jagged edges or pixelation anywhere. It is absolutely performing like a beast. Just sometimes here and there when I'm going from one part to another, it, there was just like a slight little uh, jagged thing that just occurred in there. I think it's because the scene is loading on the other side. Got to reload. So let's uh, replenish. Okay, there we go. And then let's go inside. I mean, you can tell, look at these graphics. They're absolutely, absolutely amazing. You can see there's no compression whatsoever anywhere here on these molecules as you can see it's supposed to be hot so the beast is breathing and you can see all these particles floating out of it as it's hot and you can see the fire flames as well it's just absolutely amazing there's absolutely no compression whatsoever i am super super impressed uh, when it comes to the performance of the desktop here compared to for example the virtual streaming which i believe isn't as good but do hit the notification bell after subscribe as they will be providing you the video doing the comparison with VD and also doing the comparison with the actual virtual streaming software. But like Guy Dan has done an absolutely good job. So now we are inside of a different environment, which is more indoor. So indoors, it's performing well as well. I would have thought that indoors in dark colors, I would see more compression, but honestly speaking, it is doing pretty well. Maybe here, just here, it does feel that is 
a little bit of compression here and there. It's not super, super sharp, but the wall itself is very sharp. He is very sharp. The moment I put the light on, it does look much sharper. Although just here, I have to be a bit closer to see sharper. The moment that I'm around here, it looks a little bit more blurry. I think compared to tethered experience on PC VR with the HP Reverb GT, for example, this would actually look more clear, but I have to say it's a very, very minute little detail. So yeah, so let's carry on because this is absolutely amazing in terms of the experience that I'm having in here. All right, we have the tape. And then let's take this, Down boom, the there we go. Let's go and fight some more zombies and see how the game actually performs as we're going up the stairs here. here once we get rid of this, we get rid of that, there we go. Supplies. And then let's shoot some zombies. Look at this, guys, I mean, absolutely amazing. I have a little bit of warping going on when I'm shooting. You can tell in the graphics with the, uh, what do you call them? The fire, as, as the gun is firing, you can see the fire. And there's warping inside of the actual fire area itself as I play, as I shoot with the gun. This sometimes is due to a graphics card performance, which means that basically we do need to bring down some of the settings now and then in order to make sure that that warping effect doesn't actually show itself. And the more, you know, the more the card is trying to work, the bigger the warping will be. But as you could tell, the warping is very, very, very minimal. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna switch to another PC VR game, of course. So what are we gonna choose? Hmm, find out in just a moment. Now, what I really do like about the Pico 4 is you can press and hold the home button and it will align everything for you. You don't need to go into your Steam VR settings and click on the recenter. You just use your actual button on the controller directly, which is really, really cool. Now let's go to the options first and let's make sure that all the performance, we put it on ultra fidelity, even though it's probably too high. We just want to push the limits. This is what VR Essentials is all about, guys, of course. And then let's go back, and then we're gonna start a game. All right, guys, so we're inside you know, of Half-Life Alex now, and I'm still doing here. a screencast you on the screen, so everything that you see on the screen is basically being yeah. screencasted we to the web this. browser, and then, you know, you can see what I see. So what you see, however, just, is in 1080p. The actual headset yeah, itself are. is in 4K, of I'm course. Now, I'm not having any issues whatsoever inside of the game. I did bring down the settings, however, if I just go to options and then I go to performance, I did have to bring it down to high fidelity because in ultra fidelity, I noticed that there were some glitches here and there in the graphics. So it seems to be working and performing better at high fidelity. However, if I don't have OBS open, the screen casting, and all these various different things, then obviously I could also have it at ultra fidelity without any issues. And if you have a 380, 390, or 4000 series graphics card, then obviously your actual experience inside of the game is gonna be much, much better than mine as well, for sure. All right, let's get the uh, Alexis there. Ooh. Look at these, I mean, the graphics are absolutely amazing. I have to say, it looks really sharp. There's no compression whatsoever. Now, when I actually touch the trigger, there is actually a response on the actual controllers, guys. I don't have to press the trigger in order to see a response in Half-Life Alex. If I press, in fact, her hand will go even further. So if I let go, but I keep touching the controllers, there we go. And then if I let go of the actual trigger, then the hand will actually respond. So this is pretty cool. And it's the same thing with the actual joystick on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, it's not working, but on the left one, you can see the thumb is moving just by pressing slightly. That means just touching the actual thumbstick, then the actual thumbs. Oh, there we go. Both thumbs are now working. If I press the thumbs, then you can see there's more action going on there as well. So. Actually, the controllers are very, very sensitive, touch sensitive, in fact, and not just sensitive to pressing something. So that's really, really good to know. All right, so let's go down. There we go. Now, I am having some performance issues, I have to admit. Right, you know there is some, uh, there's a bunch of junk down there. but that, that is Name also because I have so many open. different programs and software open. Yep, so let's just it. do a Make test a with the actual grabbing of things. So let me go to the grab, there we go. Boom. Oh. I wasn't able to grab it, so let me try again. 
There we go. No, I wasn't able to grab it again. Now, as you can see, the latency is okay. I mean, there's not so much latency in terms of the tracking as I go up and down, up and down, or center, you know, the, the tracking is absolutely okay. But it seems that there's an issue here. So let me just try again. Registered. Now flick your wrist to bring it in. Okay, I'm trying to get it. Okay, there we go. There's a bottle. Now I'm able to grab it. Okay. But as you can tell, now that I've got the actual bottle, there is more latency going on here for sure. So what I can do is I can just bring down my settings once more. We're just going to go to options. Then we're going to go to performance. And then we're just going to bring it down to medium, guys. Because I'm running so many different things on the actual computer. And now it is much better again. Let's see if we can do this. There we go. I grabbed it. No problem whatsoever this time. There we go, like grabbed that. it. Oh, as you could see, it did Perfect. like a We're matrix down. effect oh, there oh, where wait. the bottle uh, just forgot. slightly stopped. Alex, it, 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 it like went slow, more slowly, more slowly, more slowly as it came into my hand. And then, okay, it's he's going to now. throw me the gun. Where's the gun? There it is, oh, right there. Guns need ammo. And then he's going to throw me a uh, some go. bullets. Okay, see if I can grab it. There we go, yep, got it, put it in, boom. There we go, all nicely done. All right, let's move forward and let's see how it performs where we have all the bad guys. Now here, there's no compression on the VR Assistant. However, using the wireless uh, free version of Pico, there's a lot of compression here. In fact, to be honest with you, there's more compression in general with the Pico Wireless VR Assistant. However, do hit the notification bell after you subscribe as I will do oh, a video you, uh, with that, that lock, then. Good. in the future Great. as well. All right, so we're back in Half-Life Alex, and I want to show you some side-by-side -side comparisons where I'm not actually using the casting, but I'm recording the video from the actual Pico itself, and we're choosing two different bit rates. So one bit rate is actually around 82, and then the other bit rate is the original one, which is at 150. And you can clearly see that the one that is on the right hand side which is the 151 is much clearer than the one at around 80 which is almost half of the actual bit rate compared to the one on the right hand side and i would say that the, when the bit rate is around 80 or under that it's actually more comparison to the actual pico virtual assistant wireless uh, software that they provide completely free of charge compared to the one with virtual desktop because when you actually bump up the bitrate with virtual desktop and you're not using screencasting or you're not using OBS or you're not using a Canon or what have you not software also operating inside of your actual computer and more importantly you're not screencasting also inside of your computer then the quality is definitely going to be bumped up, there'll be even less compression, even though the compression earlier was very good, I was having some issues with the actual locomotion. So just some, you know, some feedback there, some tips there that you can adjust the VR bitrate, you'll have less latency, but a little bit more compression. Although, as I mentioned before, with my RTX 2070, even though it's at the max, I don't have any issues with the actual latency itself or the compression. So if you have a computer that is having a GPU at 3000 or the 4000 series, then I definitely think that you're gonna have even less of an issue than I am having now. So please do leave a comment below and let me know whether with your 3000 or 4000 series graphics card, you're having any issues whatsoever, or whether it's all smooth, or if you have less than a 2070 RTX, I'd love to have your feedback as well. And of course, if you're an AMD kind of owner, then please let us know in the comments below whether you're having any issues as well, as this will help the community. All right, so the first thing we can do is, of course, go to our store, which is here, and then basically search for virtual desktop, which will be here, in here. And then you just need to download it. Of course, it is there is a fee to download this app. Then after it's downloaded, you can find it inside of your library. So let's do the settings to begin with. So once you're in, basically, what's going to happen is uh, on your computer, you're going to have to install it, of course, download it from your actual computer, because if you just download it from the app itself, it's going to say no computers found. So all we have to do now is just go to our computer. And then once you find the program, open it up. And then all you have to do basically is go to the video. This will tell you where it's saving stuff. Options, just put these options here. So for example, I prefer my codec to be H.264 if you're recording content. 
O2 streaming VR headset and computer, yes, so I can hear it. And it will use the virtual audio driver. Allow remote connections, yes, this means that basically you can control your computer from your VR headset. Uh, encrypt local traffic, you can do that if you wish. Automatic adjust bitrate, yes. Start with Windows. Start minimizing tray, so I leave this disabled. For automatic bitrate, you can also disable this if you feel that you have better settings with your own personal settings, so you can do some experimentation. Use touch input, yes. Lock computer on disconnect, no. Auto select microphone, yes. And of course, you can on disable this and choose a specific microphone and ask for computer access. Then we can go to the options, sorry, the accounts. You're gonna have to input your name whether you're using uh, whichever VR headset you're using it with. For me, it's a Pico. So I put the username. It has to be the same username that you're using inside of the actual headset itself. All right, so once we're inside of here, before we choose the actual computer, let's just go to environments. There we go. Now there's a whole heap of different environments that you can actually choose from, including an auditorium, like so. The latest ones are the modern apartments. Now there's two different ones, one in the evening and one in the daytime. And you'll see outside of the actual window, the car is moving. So this is really, really surreal, really, really unreal. Another one will be the modern apartment at night. So there you go, you have all the night sky, exactly the same, but at night time. And again, you'll see the cars in the street moving around as well. So this is pretty cool. And the graphics here are absolutely amazing, guys. Everything is really, really super sweet. You also have a home theater, which is really amazing. Really, really cool environment. Then I'll show you one last one. Everything is very clear. The graphics are amazing. There's no compression whatsoever in here. It is really, really super sweet. So let's just go back to the auditorium very quickly as it will be bigger. And let's go to the actual input. So in the input, I put controllers interact with desktop. Yes, so this means we can actually change the anything on the desktop as if I'm using my mouse on the computer itself. Of course, I could be using the trigger. So that's really amazing. Point of stabilization, yes. Automatically high controllers, yes. Thumbstick vertical scrolling, yes. And then press grip to grab resize, yes. Emulate gamepad on PC, Yes. You can also have the options for emulating a D-pad and start button as well, which I leave disabled for now. In the settings, make sure to auto connect to computer. Yes. Use optional resolution. Yes. This will change the monitor's resolution to match the streaming resolution, which is recommended. Environment quality today, we're going to put it on high. Uh, you can put it on medium if you wish, but I put it on high for today. We also for the frame rate, you have 90 Hertz and 72 Hertz frame rate or frames per second. Now to make sure you have 90 FPS, do make sure to go your settings, go to my library, and then I will go to my settings and make sure that inside of the lab, your 90 Hertz refresh rate is enabled because otherwise by default, by the way, it is disabled. So make sure to enable it. And then once it's enabled, your headset will restart. And then when you're back in virtual desktop, you'll be able to choose 90 frames per second for the bit rate. Uh, it, you can choose whichever bitrate you want for your desktop. The higher the bitrate will increase quality when streaming the desktop, but it will also increase battery usage, FYI. And if for video show I hidden items, no, I don't want to show these. Screen brightness, 100%. Dynamic lighting, dynamic lighting, excuse me, I put this to disabled because I'm not quite sure if it will cause any issues. Audio, you can choose to have background music, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to leave it disabled. Microphone pass through, yes, of course, so other people can hear us. And advanced options allow customer orientation in all environments, I leave this disabled. Boost clock rates, we could disable this if we're doing some streaming or recording, but hopefully everything will be okay. Copy screenshots to desktop, yes. So we go to streaming next. Make sure for the VR graphics quality that you choose the actual graphics card that it is meant to be for. So for me, it's the RTX 2070, we leave to medium. VR frame rates, again, 90 frames per second. VR bit rate, now normally it is around 60, but I'm gonna put it to maximum. This will increase also the battery and uh, may increase also the latency. However, let's test and see how it does. Sharpening 60%, I'll put it to 68. Gamma, uh, synchronous space warping, I leave it to automatic. Advanced options, sliced 
and video buffering is enabled and track controllers is enabled as well. Now for the games, it's very important to choose the games from the actual games pad and not from the actual uh, from the actual Steam itself. You have to choose them from here. So what we're going to do is, of course, it didn't think that it could choose my computer just now. So let's just exit of this. There we go. And then we're going to go back inside of a virtual desktop. And then normally you'll see, because of course it's enabled on my computer, it finds my computer and it's automatically connected. And then now, as you could see, I can move around my actual browser. Here we go. So this is my computer and my browser, as you can tell. So everything is all good. All right. So we're going to bring back the panel here. We're going to go to games and then we're going to start off first with a very, very simple game, which will be Shooty Skies. And let's see how it does. And then later we will go, of course, different games which require different kind of uh, graphic settings and see how it does as we move further, further along in the graphic game changes. So there you have it, guys. Thank you very much for spending some time together. It was a little bit of a long video, of course, but doing these ultimate guide kind of tips and trick videos do take a little bit of time. And as I mentioned, do go into the description below where you have some timestamps there to skip and go and rewatch the parts that you want to watch again. So definitely virtual desktop on the Pico 4 is, I would say, a mile worth it. Of course, it is not a free app. And I will do, as I mentioned in the video, more comparison to using the Pico Virtual Assistant Streamer, which is completely free, by the way, in terms of the biggest differences when using various different apps. But there are definitely noticeably some compression differences there for the Virtual Assistant with Pico. It, the clarity is just not there. But as I mentioned before, hit the notification bell after you subscribe and smash the likes as I will upload those comparison videos in the future. All right, guys, until next time, lovely to spend some time with you. I will see you in that video here or the one there. But until next time, take it easy.